Even in this nuclear-rich world, every country wants to keep the world's most advanced fighter aircraft. Between the Salt Rafale and Chengdu J-20, who do you think is better? Let's compare. The Dassault Rafale is a twin-engine Canada Delta Wing multi-role fighter aircraft designed and built by French Dassault Aviation. The Rafale, literally known as the Gust of Wind, is equipped with a wide range of weapons. It is intended to perform air supremacy, interdiction, aerial reconnaissance, ground support, in-depth strike, anti-ship strike and nuclear deterrence missions. The Chengdu J-20, on the other hand, is a single-seat, twin-jet, all-weather stealth fifth-generation fighter aircraft developed for the People's Liberation Army Air Force by China's Chengdu Aerospace Corporation. It is also known as the Mighty Dragon. The J-20 is designed as an air superiority fighter with precision strike capability. The Chengdu J-20 is more expensive than the French Dassault Rafale. The estimated cost of Chengdu J-20 is 110 million US dollars compared to the original 74 million US dollars per unit price tag of an individual Dassault Rafale. As for the dimensions, the Mighty Dragon is quite larger compared to the Rafale, measuring a length of 20.4 meters, a wingspan of 13.5 meters, and a wing area of 78 meters. Only the height of the Rafale is larger compared to its rival, that is 5.34 meters. There's no doubt that the weight of the J-20 is nearly double than that of the Rafale fighter. Even in other specifications like gross weight and maximum takeoff weight, the Rafale fighter jet is again far behind the Mighty Dragon, measuring only 15,000 kg and 24,500 kg. As for the fuel capacity too, the Rafale is far lesser, measuring only 4,700 kg to 11,340 kg that of the J-20. Now coming to engine and power. The Rafale is fitted with two Snecma M88 engines, each capable of providing up to 50 kN of dry thrust and 75 kN with afterburners. The engines feature several advances, including a non-polluting combustion chamber, single crystal turbine blades, powder metallurgy discs and technology to reduce radar and infrared signatures. In the case of the Mighty Dragon, it is equipped with Shenyang WS-10B, while some other sources suggested that the initial production J-20s are equipped with the Salute AL-31FM2, a highly upgraded variant of the Lyulka AL-31. The engine has maximum afterburning thrust of 145 kN. In the long term, the aircraft is planned to be equipped with the WS-15 engine, which produces 180 kN of thrust currently under development. Talking about their performance numbers, the Rafale has a maximum speed of 1,912 km per hour, which is just less compared to the J-20. However, its ferry range is far behind the Mighty Dragon. The combat radius of these two fighters are almost the same, but the service ceiling of J-20 is more than 4 km compared to the Rafale. The Rafale was first outfitted with the Thales RBE-2 passive electronically scanned multi-mode radar. Thales claims to have achieved increased levels of situational awareness and can track multiple air targets for close combat and long-range interception. Official information on the type of radar that J-20s use have not yet been released publicly. Some analysts believe that J-20s use Type 1475 Active Electronically Scanned Array or AESA radar with 1856 transmit receive modules. So who has got the better weaponry and armament? Both fighter jets have distinctly similar levels of armament. Rafale can carry payloads of more than 9 tons on 14 hardpoints for the Air Force version, with 13 for the naval version. The range of weapons include the Mica Magic 2, Sidewinder, ASRAAM and AMRAAM air-to-air -air missiles, ALARAM, HARM, Maverick and PGM-100 air-to-ground missiles, AM-39, Penguin 3 and Harpoon anti-ship missiles. 
The J-20, on the other hand, comprises eight hardpoints and a large belly weapon bay to incorporate long-range PL-12 CD and PL-21 air-to-air missiles. The aircraft will also be equipped with two small lateral weapon bays beneath the air inlets to integrate PL-10 short-range air-to-air missiles. It is also expected to be equipped with air-to-surface missiles, anti-radiation missiles, laser-guided bombs and drop bombs. Although not a full aspect stealth aircraft, the Rafale was designed for a reduced radar cross-section and infrared signature, which means it has some stealth features which have neither been exaggerated nor been overhyped. They have reduced the RCS by reduction in size of the tail fin, fuselage reshaping, repositioning of the engine air inlets underneath the aircraft's wing and the extensive use of composite materials. As for the Chengdu J-20, analysts noted that the J-20's nose and canopy uses a similar stealth shaping design as the F-22 Raptor, but the J-20's side and exit symmetric engine nozzles may expose the aircraft to radar. According to various media reports, the Chengdu J-20 could still be detected despite involving stealth technology. Many have raised doubts about the use of cannons on a low observable design, stating that cannons could guarantee radar detection and a compromise of stealth. The French 4.5 generation fighter jets have been used in combat over Afghanistan, Libya, Mali, Iraq, and Syria. So with proven war capabilities and tested weaponry and radars, it has the potential to completely surprise the Chinese fifth-generation fighter jets, which is still in the upgradation stage. It is highly unlikely that China will bring its J-20 face-to-face with the Rafale fighter jets anytime soon until they are self-assured of its capabilities. Although Rafale is not a fifth-generation fighter, but its performance is highly advanced. Despite its low cost, it has more advantages as well. China's Chengdu J-20 looks good on paper, but little is known about how it will perform long-term in operational status and maintainability. But overall, China's aviation and electronics manufacturing ability, I think, is far below France. As for me, I believe that if these two fighters ever meet in combat, their performance will not just decide the outcome. Pilots play a major role here, like their level of tactical planning on how to engage with the opposing aircraft. The actual response in the stress of actual combat determines the result of the engagement. But what do you guys think? Do comment down in the comment section below and we'd love to read your thoughts and opinions. With this, we're signing off for today. Until next time, bye-bye.